about training schemes. Um, if you did want to have a look at any of our previous sessions, they are on our uh, IR Juniors uh, YouTube channel. So you can find that on YouTube. And today uh, we have um, a wealth of uh, experience from all over the country. Um, uh, so we have speakers from um, Peninsula, Imperial, London, Birmingham, Manchester, Wessex and Leeds. So literally from across the whole country. Um, I'll briefly hand over to each one of them now just to introduce themselves. Uh, and then the, the structure of the session will basically be um, each, each speaker will have roughly five, five minutes or so to discuss their scheme. Um, and we will then be having um, a, a larger Q&A towards the end of the session. So, um, yeah, if we could, I'll hand over to Dr. Andrew McCormack just to briefly introduce himself and then we can hear from everyone and then move on to the, uh, the, the bulk of the, the sessions. Hi guys, I'm Andy, I'm one of the trainees down in Peninsula, uh, so mainly based in Peninsula, but kind of all across the region. And Yuang? Hi, I'm Yuang, I'm with the uh, ST2s. Oops. The ST2s are Imperial. Uh, Vritti? Uh, hi, I'm Vritti. I'm one of the SD5 radiology trainees at the Royal Free in London. And we've also got Matt with us today. Hi guys, yeah, I'm Matt, one of the SD6s working at King's, but I've worked at a couple of other places as well, which I'll cover in due course. And then we've got Winnie. Hi, I'm Winnie. I'm the ST6 in um, IR in Birmingham, I'm working in QE at the moment. I think we're still waiting on Devia, so um, we've got Sean, Sean with us as well. I am Sean, so I'm an ST5 at Southampton. I'm going to talk about the Southampton based. And finally, we've got Jim. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm currently doing a PhD in Leeds. Just finished my ST5 year of training. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, so we'll move on to the, the, the main bulk of the, the talk now. Um, so we'll start with uh, Andy, who's going to talk to us a little bit more about Peninsula. Uh, brilliant. So let me just share. Can you guys see that roughly? Yeah. Brilliant. Great. So, so yeah, so I'm Andy, one of the trainees down in the Peninsula region. Um, so... It's one of the kind of larger regions in the UK, so it covers all the way down kind of deepest, darkest Cornwall, um, all the way up to Taunton. Um, so we're quite a, a Dino stretched over quite a large um, kind of land mass. Um, there are kind of six key hospitals um, within the deanery. Um, so the main big one that's the trauma centre is um, Dereford in Plymouth. Um, and then we've got Royal Cornwall Hospital and RD&E, kind of some of the larger um, district general hospitals. And then North Devon and Tor Bay are the kind of smaller peripheral hospitals. Um, and then you've got Musgrove Park Hospital in Taunton is kind of split between the Peninsula Deanery and the Seven Deanery. Um, so in terms of the training scheme, um, so the Peninsula scheme is an academy training scheme. Um, so... What that effectively means is that, especially in the earlier years, so ST1 and ST2, um, quite a large proportion of your time is spent in the Peninsula Radiology Academy, which you can see just on the top right-hand side of the image. So this is based in Plymouth. Um, so even if your placement is in Musgrove or Royal Cornwall, a large proportion of your time is spent, is spent in Plymouth at the Radiology Academy. Um, and in ST1, this typically is um, on a month by month basis. So you um, rotate between hospital placements and academy placements. Um, it's the same in ST2, and then it gradually decreases as you go through. Um, and the kind of academy structure is uh, mainly small group consultant led teaching. So typically groups of three and four. Um, and every day um, you have uh, different sessions with consultants of different specialties coming in um, and they'll give you very small group teaching, very case based um, kind of hot seat teaching. So it's very much kind of come and sit in the chair. What do you think? And then as you get more experience and start to know more and more, kind of you can really see that difference as you, your kind of knowledge increases. Um, 
Um, so you do that for your academy months um, and you've also got the opportunity to have a go on all the simulators that we've got at the academy. So we've got um, kind of IR and ultrasound simulators um, at the academy, which are a really good learning resource. Um, and there's also ultrasound lists uh, every day at the academy, which we're free to kind of drop in and drop out of um, to get ultrasound experience from a very kind of early point. Um, the kind of other month is spent in hospitals and across the kind of five or six years, you effectively rotate around the region. Um, so especially ST1 to 3, you, you'll do three different hospitals, um, which can mean quite a lot of traveling. Um, but because it's an academy base, a lot of people end up basing themselves in Plymouth um, because then, you know, at least 50 percent of your time, you kind of be in Plymouth at the academy. Um, I, I was always a big fan of the academy kind of schemes themselves because I think they kind of deliver that self-directed learning aspect, which I always quite enjoy. So I'm a bit biased. I was a Peninsula graduate as well. So I haven't really traveled very far, but I quite like the kind of style of kind of learning effectively of having a lot of it driven by yourself. Um, and at the Academy, we have so much time to do effectively whatever we want. So we have tons of time for research, teaching, audits, whatever you want to do, um, kind of, you can really build your CV and portfolio from ST1, um, which was a big thing for me. I kind of wanted that chance to have other interests instead of just radiology. So yeah, uh, and the thing that drew me as well, Peninsula, the beat as you top left. Um, so, you know, a big thing, loads of people come down here on holiday. So I guess you can just live down here instead and then you don't have to do that. So that's pretty much my bit. Thanks very much, Andy. Um, so just if there were any questions uh, for Andy, we, we could take them now, because I think Andy has to head off a little bit early. So if there were any specific questions about uh, the Peninsula Training Scheme or Academies, then now might, have been, now might be a good time to, to address those. Um, so please let them filter through um, on the Slido. Um, there's, so there's one question here about uh, what are the on-calls like? Uh, in Peninsula, Andy. I think you're still muted. Ah, brilliant. Thank you. Sorry, it was blocking me, unmuting myself. Um, so the on calls start um, kind of first day of ST2. Um, so in ST1 year, you do what we call kind of MRI shifts where you're effectively just there to report some plain films and be there in case, you know, there's um, pediatric contrast examinations and things in your first year. Um, and then from kind of the first day of ST2, you do on calls and it's called a, the Peninsula Regional On Call Network. So it's a centralized on call system for the whole of the kind of Southwest of England really. Um, so, you know, you may be based at Dereford, but you'll be taking calls from every one of those hospitals from Exeter downwards. Um, the on-call rotors are normally really quite friendly because we've got a lot of trainees and, you know, three years ago we had eight or so in a year, but we're now up to 18 in a year and that's only continuing to grow. So the on-call rotor is becoming more friendly um, and it's very supervised. So although you're on call from the first day of ST2, whenever there's an ST2 on, there's pretty much always a post FRCR senior registrar there as well. So they'll either be in the same room as you or just at the end of the phone, because there's three of you on call at any one time. And, and when do you start rotating to DGHs? Uh, so that's part of your preferencing. So um, you can choose to either be at the major trauma center or the bigger hospitals. Um, in your first year um, or you can choose kind of later on but typically in those first three years you'll do at least one if not two years at a DGH. Um, if you choose to do IR um, in the later years you typically um, tend to spend most of your time at Dereford um, or Truro because they're the two kind of bigger um, IR centres in the southwest. So we have one question. So just to clarify in the academy, do you have entire months of time when you're at the academy and then entire months at the DGH or is it a bit more interspersed? 
so it's entire months. So in ST1 and 2, um, it's an entire month for the academy, then an entire month in the hospital, which may be one of the trauma centres, maybe the trauma centre, or it may be a DGH, depending what year you're on. Um, as you go into ST2, again, it's a month on and a month off. And then in ST3, it's two months in the hospital and then one month in the academy. So it kind of gradually weans. And then ST456, it's kind of the odd day here and there, really. Um, and, and one more question for the Peninsula Deanery. Are there any subspecialties that it's known for in particular? It's a good question. Um, so it's, I think Plymouth's not exactly regarded as, you know, the, the UK's top research facility or anything like that. But the one thing I'd say about kind of the Peninsula training scheme is the opportunity to get hands on with pretty much everything from right at the beginning is definitely there. Um, there are a few subspecialties that you have to do out of um, deanery experience in, particularly peds. Um, you have to go to Bristol or um, somewhere else um, to kind of get more experience, but everything else is, um, is offered down here. Okay, um, so I think we uh, can move on to our next speaker. So thanks very much, Andy, for talking about Peninsula. That was really, really uh, useful and interesting to hear about. Um, next, we've got Dr. Yuang Zhu, who's going to tell us a little bit more about uh, Imperial. Hi, uh, thanks for tuning in this evening. Um, I think most of you will become radiologists, I, I, hopefully this year, and, and um, it's a good, good, good career choice. Many of you might join Imperial. Um, just wanted to discuss that this entirely, and don't blame me for anything uh, untowards. Um, so I'm a imperial at the moment. So one year, uh, we for my year we had twelve ST ones, and the year below us had eleven. So uh, probably as a traditional training scheme, we're probably largest in country or one of the largest. Um, and um, you know, with with that number, there's, there's some strengths. Um, so uh, as Andy was saying, so some on course. Uh, it's quite flexible if you want to go to some other sites for subspecialty training you will always get covered and your leaves um, on course swaps but in particular i think they're pretty good the imperial is mainly based at three hospitals so st mary's Charing cross and hammersmith we do have rotations either dgh rotations to barnett hospital uh, west middlesex um, and hillingdon um, at the DGH block and subspecialty blocks at the Royal uh, Brompton, um, uh, Great Ormond Street. Um, I think those were the main sites. We don't go to uh, Charlton, Westminster or uh, Mount Vernon, which were also in the Northwest London uh, dinnery, uh, but as separate training schemes. Um, so the for the ST1, we start quite early. So we, we, we start in August. Um, and um, the first two months now, we do induction in ultrasound for a month and neuroradiology for a month. And the reason for the um, neuroradiology in particular uh, with early focus is the, that the Charlie Cross is a uh, neuro neurology, neurosurgery, uh, stroke, uh, and interventional radiology, neuroradiology uh, center. So we, um, you know, we expected to get onto that quite well, quite early. Um, but also come with that is a on call commitment, which starts in usually in June as the one. Um, so the TPDs are very keen to get us, um, you know, up to speed with that. But following that, um, I think some, some of the schemes do a modality-based uh, ST1 training. We go straight into subspecialty training, and there are pros and cons, which I'm happy to answer if there's interest in the uh, later Q&A. And from ST1, later ST1 onwards, uh, till um, um, ST, end of ST3, we do currently six month blocks in different subspecialties and, and DGH is a one general block. Um, and that covers basically all the curriculum, um, you know, up to uh, FRCR 2B. Um, Imperial basically has got almost everything apart from liver transplants. Um, it's got um, um, some specialty um, that I think other uh, parts of the country may not see. 
and in particular by having um, a, a lot of registrars and be very flexible training. Um, some people can quite easily go to other, you know, specialist hospitals as part of their uh, week uh, to gain more experience if it's not, you know, a super subspecialized specialty locally. For example, I know trainees in gastroenterology, in, in imaging, we can go to Royal Free for, say, two, two days a week for um, HPB related stuff. Some of them went to uh, Barnet or Royal Brompton for chest um, specific imaging um, training. <coughs> and for IR, um, so St. Mary's is a trauma center. So it's a lot of trauma related stuff and it's also a vascular center. So actually there's a lot of aortic work going on. Um, and Hammersmith um, is, is um, national, one of the national referral centers for pulmonary AVM. Um, and some weird sort of a pituitary um, kind of uh, sampling. So kind of weird wonderfuls. Uh, and uh, Charlie Cross has got quite a lot of uro urology um, uh, referrals. Um, yeah, I think I would just leave it there. And if any other questions, just uh, probably ask at the end, if that's okay. Yeah, so we do have one specific question, just how often are the on calls at Imperial? I know you mentioned it is quite flexible, but do you have a uh, like a quantitative uh, answer for that? Um, I haven't done the calculation properly, but I would say probably equivalent to seven, so overnight sessions, probably seven nights per t every two months. Um, but there's also um, evening <coughs> shifts. And shifts attempts as a trauma uh, sort of day shift so that's variable um, but I would say overall um, probably we're looking at three weeks per eight to nine weeks something like that okay and um, do you get so the one of the questions for Imperial was that the the hospital sound quite spread out do you get a choice in where you rotate uh, at all uh, for the subspecialties uh, for the DGH, you mean, uh, they are quite spread out. Um, but in terms of um, uh, preference, I think you can express that to some extent. In terms of the central hospitals, uh, no, we sometimes, uh, so almost certainly within the week, you travel to at least two sites. Sometimes you need to travel to two sites in, a, in the same day. Um, so, um, but they are like a staff bus and stuff. You can just hop on and uh, go across. That's quite easy. Uh, well, thanks very much, Joang. Um, again, really, really helpful and useful. Um, so next, we're going to be moving on to another one of the London schemes, uh, the Royal Free. And for that, we've got Ritchie, who's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Um, okay, hi. So my name's Ritchie. I'm one of the ST5s in radiology at the Royal Free and also working at Barnet Hospital. Um, and I have a subspecialty interest in thoracic radiology, including thoracic intervention. Um, and um, so a little bit about the Royal Free Training Scheme. So it's a bit smaller than the Imperial Training Scheme. We have five, an intake of around five ST1s every year, and they start in August. And the ST1 year is structured um, based on modalities. So you have two-month rotations in each of CT, ultrasound, fluoro, which is mainly barium swallows, um, interventional radiology, which includes a little bit of neuro time as well, and ultrasound intervention. And alongside that, um, you have sessions in plain film reporting and on hot seat, and hot seat's probably the most stressful part of the ST1 in terms of being the port of call for clinicians across the hospital to um, answer their queries about imaging and scans that have been done. But, but it's really well supported. So there's always people to ask questions and everyone's very, very approachable. Um, in the first year, there's also a weekend on call commitment for the ST1s, which is working with one of the senior registrars and mainly answering phone calls and gaining some experience with the on-call take. Um, there's daily morning teaching, initially focused on anatomy for the exams that are in first year. And, um, throughout the first year, you're learning to report um, plain film as well. So you, you get signed off 
for reporting a &E x rays about two thirds of the way through the year. And you become quite proficient with general ultrasound and fluoroscopy as well. We also have a local on-call exam towards the end of the year um, to prepare you for the second year um, when you start going on call. Um, the second year is mainly based at DGH sites, either at the Whittington or Barnet Hospital, and you have four month blocks. It's quite general ultrasound heavy, and you start doing ALF hours on call shifts in the evenings, um, providing preliminary acute CT reports mainly. And you also have um, some subspecialty based uh, training as well, which is quite flexible. You can pick what you'd like to do for each four month block. Going on to the third year, you then get um, rotations in specialist sites, including Great Ormond Street Hospital and Queen Square. Um, and you also start doing senior on-call shifts at the Royal Free, which is nights and weekends. And um, those are quite busy shifts. And you also are busy from an exam point of view as well at that time. And what's really good about the Royal Free is the teaching is very, is very comprehensive and good um, and involved from the consultant body. Um, moving on to the fourth and fifth years, we have the London-wide matching scheme for the subspecialty years. The Royal Free is specifically very good for um, interventional radiology, specifically uh, HPB. It's also um, very good for breast radiology training as well. Um, in terms of things it has less exposure to, I would say um, less exposure to neuro early on compared to other schemes. Um, and with that also less exposure to head and neck. Uh, trauma, we, we don't do too much of, and gynae. Um, but overall, it's a really, really friendly department. Everyone's very approachable. Everyone knows you. Um, and yeah, no regrets about my training at the Royal Free. Thank you very much, Ritty. Um, we will move on to the next scheme, um, which is finishing off London. Um, schemes at the moment. So we've got Dr. Matt Seeger next, who's going to tell us a little bit about um, a few different schemes, including King's, George's and UCH. Thanks, Ashton. Um, let me just share the screen. Um, hi guys, yeah, um, uh, thanks for having me on. Um, uh, my name is Matt Seeger, I'm an SD6 uh, working at King's and uh, training at IR at the moment. Um, I've become a bit of a radiology nomad, so I've covered a few different schemes in my time. So I started off at um, St George's, so I'll talk about that first. I did my core radiology uh, training there in ST1-3. to I then spent two years at, at UCH, University College Hospital, uh, where I started interventional training uh, for ST4 and ST5. And then, um, as I say, I'm currently at King's doing ST6, my uh, final year. Um, so start off with George's. Um, a few general bits. It's a trauma centre, um, a fairly busy trauma centre. So the referral network for that covers much of um, sort of Surrey and west of where George's is really. So kind of the shires west of, of Tooting. Um, it has more or less all subspecialties on site in terms of clinical uh, side of things. So you'll see the subsequent imaging uh, that goes with that. It's a renal transplant centre, so uh, the radiologists are fairly heavily involved with the um, follow-ups for those, both immediately postoperatively and in the in the follow-up um, in the weeks and months after. It's a very busy hospital, and I think that that transfers to the radiology department as well, which is also very busy. But uh, I had a very positive experience there. Um, in terms of on calls, you start them at the end of SC1. Uh, there's like an on-call test, uh, which everyone uh, is fine with generally, and there's lots of preparation beforehand. When you're on call, it's there's, it's very well supported. So there's uh, you you become the junior on call at the end of ST1, and there's always a post FRCR person that you're on call with as well. They tend to stay till about midnight, and then they're non-resident on call after that. Um, so it is kind of just you overnight, but they're only a phone call away, and, and most of the the seniors stay on site as well. So they'll come back and it's busy, or if there's uh, particularly complex things, and you have to contact them about certain things uh, like pediatric imaging. Um, in terms of teaching, I think it's really good. It's one of the strengths of George's. Um, there's daily morning tutorials, which are consultant led or, or senior registrar led. There's excellent preparation for all the exams, particularly the 2B. There's a, a real focus on and giving lots and lots of tutorials. Um, and there's also, you know, at the start, the usual hands-on ultrasound teaching and things like that. Um, in terms of DGH rotations, these are done in largely SD1 and SD2. You do four month blocks generally. Uh, oh no, sorry, three-month blocks actually at George's, unless that's changed since I've left. 
Um, but the main places you go to are Epsom and Sahelia and Kingston Hospital, which are both are all very good hospitals. Um, they're very good, I think, for the core years because you just get your hands in in terms of ultrasound and just doing, you know, your basic acute CT imaging. Um, and I, I think they're very valuable in the in the core years, definitely. In terms of specialty rotations, um, you can go to the Royal Marsden Hospital to do some oncological imaging, either during core radiology training or your subspecialty years. There's rotation to GOSH as part of paediatric um, imaging, but also there's paediatric surgery and quite a lot of peds on site as well. So you kind of spend half your time at George's and half your time at GOSH when you're doing peds, and that's done in the core years as well. Um, Atkinson Morley is, is actually part of St George's Hospital, but it used to be a separate um, hospital, but that's the neurocenter and everyone does a rotation there as well. And similarly, it's got neurosurgery and neurointervention and all the associated imaging with, um, with stroke as well. Um, and then there's also rotations to Royal Brompton to do chest imaging. Um, in terms of subspecialty training, when it comes to SD4 to 5, you can really cover most areas, I think. Um, certain areas are particularly strong. I say the IR training there is very good. Um, you can do um, uh, urological imaging um, and, and gynae imaging as well, I think, at some of the other strengths, but you can cover more or less all the areas. Uh, moving on to UCLH, I'd say it's a bit quieter in terms of um, being an acute hospital. There's a lot more elective work. There's lots of cancer work. It is more or less, not, not fully, but it is it's becoming more or less a, an onco oncology um, hospital. Um, there's lots of research, both in terms of radiology and, um, and outside of radiology with good links to UCL, which is next door. Um, in terms of on-calls, you start them in SD2. Nights uh, are actually outsourced, so you don't do night shifts as part of the UCLH scheme, uh, but you do evenings and weekends. And there, again, you paired up with a junior and a, and a senior. So when you start in SD2, there's always a, um, a post-FRCR person with you and there's two people on call. Um, again, the regular program is very, is very good. Um, and again, the, 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 I didn't prepare for my TB there, but it looks like the TB teaching is also very good when you come to do that um, exam. Uh, the DGH rotations of the Whittington and North Middlesex. Uh, I, I didn't do any of these because I arrived in SD4, but they, people speak very highly of both of these places, again, for getting experience and just um, getting your hands dirty, really. Um, you do do some on calls at these hospitals and they're kind of evening shifts uh, where you, you work till 11, 12 o'clock, I think, um, and then it gets handed over to one of the outsourcing companies and consultants will check your reports the next day. Um, Subspecialty rotation. So again, there's opportunities to go to GOSH. Queen Square is very close. That's one of the um, neurology and neurosurgical hospitals. And, and also there's links to the Royal Brompton as well for chest imaging. Um, I'd say for subspecialty training, uh, it's particularly strong for GI. There's lots of um, academic radiologists working at UCLH who uh, do luminal GI imaging um, and also GU imaging as well. There's lots of uh, prostate work and, and gynae as well. I think there's some of the particularly strong areas in terms of subspecialty training. I think one of the other strengths of UCH as well is that um, it's, it is relatively easy to move into research as well. And lots of the registrars do uh, MDs or PhDs as a part of their training. So there's a, there's a strong uh, link and set up. Um, so if that's something that interests you, it is relatively easy to organize uh, once you're at UCH. Um, and now finally King, to where I am at the moment. Um, it's again a trauma center. It's a very busy hospital. Um, the trauma side of things covers from sort of east of where King's is. So it's the um, area south and east, so Kent and sometimes down to Brighton and a few other places. Um, it's very busy, uh, again, and there's a wide range of pathologies. Genuinely very interesting, a lot of the imaging, like the things that you see on the scans there are, uh, are, are fairly unique, I'd say. Um, it, it's a, a liver transplant centre, and that's probably the main focus um, of the hospital, really. It's a, there's a lot of hepatology and hepatic surgery uh, going on there. Uh, Similarly to UCH, the night shifts are currently outsourced. There are There is talk of reintroducing night shifts registrars, but I think that's actually quite far away, uh, but it may happen in the next few years. Um, so the moment on call starts in SD2, where again, you do evenings and weekends. And there's quite a few people on call at Kings at any one time. There can be up to three or four or five actually on weekends and tends to be two or three people in the week. So they're very well supported. Um, they get about two teaching sessions per day. So you get lots and lots of teaching. There's a morning session and often a lunchtime session as well generally led by consultants, but also um, senior registrars as well. Um, I think there's just one DGH rotation down to Croydon. Um, and again, people speak, speak highly of going there as part of a radiology rotation. 
There are again links to Royal Brompton and you can do your neuro, uh, neuroradiology on site as well. It's a separate department, but they, they have got neuroradiology again with neurosurgery and neurointervention. Um, I'd say in terms of soft specialty training, it's particularly strong for HPB. Um, the setup there is maybe slightly different to other hospitals in that it's there are liver radiologists who do all of the intervention and also all of the diagnostics. Um, so if that's something that interests you, then that's, I think it's a really good setup because you cover both of those areas in a really comprehensive manner. Um, nuclear medicine training is actually very good. There's loads of stuff going on and all sorts of traces that I've never heard of that they're injecting into people. Um, but that's, it's, it looks really good and there's lots of research going on there. Uh, but again, really you can cover most areas um, within radiology if, if you're interested in, to be honest. Um, just, I was going to briefly just touch on radiology training in London in generally. Um, this sounds a bit cheesy, um, get out what you put in, but what, what I mean by that is that you can fret and worry about your scheme and the strengths and positives and when you start on calls relative to your peers. But actually, I think if you just get involved in your department, you work hard, you do a audit, whatever, do some research, um, take on some roles in the department, you, you do get a lot out and people are very keen to train you and you have pretty comprehensive teaching wherever you are. So I, would, I wouldn't worry too much ultimately. And so clearly things like where you live and what's suitable for your lifestyle um, uh, are some of the really important things to consider. So I wouldn't worry too much about the, you know, the exact strengths and weaknesses about your schemes, because um, ultimately it all levers out towards the end. Um, I think one of the strengths of training in London is there's lots of real sense of excellence, which are actually fairly close to each other. Um, so, for example, we heard about the, um, the pulmonary hypertension, uh, sorry, the pulmonary AVM service from Yuang. You know, it's relatively easy to arrange days a week where you go to another hospital to see things like that or, or train in doing certain procedures or, or learning certain imaging techniques. Um, there's also um, what was introduced for subspecialty training. There's now this thing called the matching process, which came in in my uh, SD4 year. And this is basically opened up subspecialty training across London. Um, so if you want to stay at your base hospital, you can do that and you're guaranteed a place because clearly, you know, you sign up to a five year somewhere, they're not going to kick you out. After. Um, but if you are in training in something else in a different hospital, you can apply to that through the matching process. And if they can accommodate you, they will. Um, if there's two people going for one post, then I think it becomes a competitive um, process and you have to have an interview. Um, but it means that you can, you know, really tailor your training to work in different areas. And it's something that I took um, advantage of and I, uh, I found really good because I've got to work in real specialist centers um, and learn from people who are, you know, really, really strong in their field. Um, as we also touched upon earlier, there is it's relatively easy to organise a day per week type attachment. So when I was at UCH, like I used to go to the Royal Free for initially two days and then a day a week. Um, and there's lots of links between all of the training programme directors. And you, you can organise things like that fairly easily. Again, if you don't want to transfer your training, but you want to gain experience of, of some particular area that another hospital is particularly expert in. Um, and then just generally there's deanery teaching as well. So the SD1s get... Um, lots of preparation for the anatomy and the physics. Um, and then after that, there's pre-FRCR and post-FRCR teaching, which tends to be about a month, uh, sorry, um, an afternoon each month. Um, but you get, you know, you get the timetable for that. And they're, they're fairly good and they cover lots of different areas in the curriculum. Um, I think that's it. So yeah, we can fire with questions later or if you want to email me about anything, that's my address. Um, if there's something that we don't cover today. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, really useful and uh, helpful again. Um, just a couple of specific questions. Um, do you know how many trainees George's Kings and UCLH take each year? Yeah, probably fairly similar numbers. So I was, when I started at George's, we were five. Um, UCH seems to be five to six and Kings is five to six. It does vary each year slightly, uh, depending on how many um, training numbers they have, which slightly depends on how many people are leaving the scheme uh, but it's between five or six for all of those I'd say. And does that matching process that you discussed does that apply to all London programs? Yeah it does and I think possibly even the Kent sorry Sussex people can apply onto it as well I might be mistaken about that but it does apply to all of the London schemes. Okay uh, thank you very much we'll move on to the next So next we've got uh, Winnie, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about the Birmingham training scheme. Hello, I'm Winnie, I'm one of the ST6 in um, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, and I'm doing an IR 
um, training. Um, so we are a very large deanery, um, which has got two um, teaching hospital, eight district general hospital and three specialist hospital. Um, so because of the large area, we are actually separate into three sectors and each sector has got its own program director. Um, so this is um, mainly just for the um, clinical radiology year, so from ST1 to ST3. So the rotations from ST1 to ST3 normally is every nine months, um, which gives you a advantage of being rotating to the second hospital before you start your own call at the beginning of second year. So you would have the um, last three months of your first year to get familiarized with the hospital which you would start on calls on. And um, that I think most trainees find quite a big advantage. And a, a lot of them would start shadowing um, at the end of their first year. So um, in terms of um, subspecialty training after the clinical radiology training, uh, we have got a combination of transplant center, trauma center, um, vascular center, and, and neuroradiology, and also the specialist um, hospital includes uh, Royal Orthopedic Hospital, which is for um, MSK, and um, Birmingham Children's Hospital, which is for pediatric, and the Birmingham Woman Hospital, which is for gynae. Um, so throughout your clinical radiology year, so ST1 to ST3, you will rotate through the general hospital, um, but not to the three specialist um, hospital until your ST4 and ST5. Um, so in terms of um, teaching, um, we're not an academy, but we have got a good um, selection of local courses. Um, these include the deanery teaching scheme, which is compulsory for all um, first year trainee um, for the FRCR part one um, exam, uh, which includes physics, anatomy, and also um, playing films. Um, this starts from October, around October time to, to January, and um, I think you will be away for teaching day um, two weeks per two days per week. And then we've got other local courses, um, including the trauma and acute radiology course in um, University of Country and Warwickshire, um, which would um, which is optional, but um, you have as a local trainee, you have got the priority to apply and that prepare you for the on call in particular. And also there's two um, FRCR 2B courses locally, um, one in Coventry and one in Heartland, which are both very um, popular. And Heartland's also run a simulation course, so it's just good for um, ultrasound simulation and then commentary run a Midland IR course as well once a year. In terms of on course, um, so I've mentioned that you will have three months at least in the hospital that you're going to start on course with, so um, most of you would have no problem and the on call it varies. So it if you're in a smaller district general hospital, some hospital actually do not have night on call, it's outsourced to teleradiology, um, um, but you will expect to do um, evening up to 8 p.m. and um, in uh, on weekends as well. So the frequency is about one to six. Um, in more busy teaching hospital, um, then you will have night on call and weekend on call. And weekend on call normally you will double up with a senior trainee. Uh, at night, um, you will be alone, um, but there will be consultant who's available for you to call for help. Um, so that's on call. And for uh, we are very popular for our training somehow in the last two, three years, we are becoming oversubscribed. Um, so there may be a chance that we may be going into a competition process for the ST4 influx. Um, but we have got our training available for all our uh, local hospitals. Um, and Okay, 
so, and we very kind of, we've got a lot of teaching um, opportunity as well. We've got two university medical schools um, in the region actually. Um, so we've got University of Warwickshire, which is attached to University of Com uh, Hospital Coventry and Warwickshire. And we've got University of Birmingham, which is attached to University Hospital Birmingham. So you have a lot of training, um, teaching opportunity if you're interested. So that's kind of a overview of our deanery. If anyone's got any questions. Yeah, we do have a couple of West Midlands specific questions, if that's all right. Um, so first question is how many places are there in each of the three sectors in the West Midlands? So the um, intake is um, for it is together, I think, and is we take about 17 to 20 trainee per year and then is kind of allocated randomly um, into the three sectors. Um, so uh, it depends on your first allocated hospital, then it can't determine which sector you're in. And once you've done core radiology within your sector, do you have to do higher training within there or can you apply for the other ones? Or no, um, higher training is separate. So it depends on what you want to spe subspecialize in. Um, you they will then come out of the sector and you can go to other sectors. Um, and just a question of what actually are the three sectors in the West Midlands? So it's separate into the north, uh, which is kind of in the black country. It includes Warsaw, um, Royal Wolverhampton Hospital, um, Russell's Hall Hospital, and Sandwell and City Hospital. Um, these are all district general hospital. However, the Wolverhampton is a very large district general hospital. It's got most of the specialties in. And um, then the central area includes, um, the central sector is University Hospital Birmingham, um, Worcester Hospital, and it goes as far as Hereford actually. So Hereford is probably a bit too far. You just move there temporarily for, for, for that rotation. Um, there's another um, sector which includes Coventry and Birmingham Heartland Hospital. I think that's all the West Midlands specific questions. So, uh, Thanks very much, Winnie. Um, next, we've got Xi'an, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the West Extinery and Training Programme. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Not able to share. So, right. Is that working? No. Not yet. I'll try again. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, so um, I guess it's not letting me... Uh, Grant access to share. Do, uh, do you want to, Jim? Do you want to carry on with yours, and I'll figure out a way of doing this. So. Yeah. Yep. Let me try and share mine if I have the same problems. Can you see lots of pictures? Real. Thank you. So um, I currently work in Leeds. I've done my entire radiology training in Leeds. So um, why Leeds? You've heard about some fantastic schemes already, and um, I'll tell you this a bit about the academy scheme based in Leeds, which. As you've already heard from Andrew, because of the academy setup, you have a lot of dedicated resources towards your training. Um, the academy is a physical hub, it's like a small 
department within the hospital. So it's within Leeds General Infirmary, which is one of the two teaching hospitals um, in Leeds. And within that, you have um, a MAC suite, which is dedicated for your teaching and case-based teaching, which you will have at least twice a week in your first year. Um, during the first year, one of the pressures is obviously managing training in a completely new specialty and learning all this new material. And you have two dedicated days in the academy where it's completely focused towards your FRCR exams. And after your first year of training, you retain one whole day within the academy in ST2 and ST3. But you can use the physical entity of the academy at any point. So if you're based within Leeds, this is a, just a place you can go and do audit, go and do MDTs or have your separate meetings arranged and um, in out of hours or if you want to do extra you know, self-directed learning there's an interventional um, simulation suite with ultrasound um, simulation models that you can use one of the big advantages of being in the academy setup is you have a, a tailored teaching program depending on which year of training you are based in towards again your exam commitments or your on-call experience so if you're in a um, space between for example two major exams then perhaps the teacher would be geared towards getting on call experience you get a variety of trainers from across the region who will come in and give you dedicated teaching on their own sub specialties so that brings me on to talk about the hospital setups so within Leeds um, there are two of the largest teaching hospitals in Europe Leeds General Infirmary and St James's University Hospital which is the bottom picture and across these two sites they are tertiary and quaternary centres for several different specialties, including paediatric surgery and neurosurgery. It's a level one trauma centre. We do um, oncology, transplants, and you will really get a wealth of experience. And so the trainees coming out of this training scheme do get a, a vast amount of experience to allow them to progress onto um, subspecialist posts in consultancy. And we do have a, a good track record for reaching very high caliber candidates. So um, in the last five years, we've had two gold medal winners. So that's awarded to the highest scoring candidate in the final um, FRC exam. So we have a good record with the higher fellowships offered within the area. Um, this includes musculoskeletal radiology, GI, intervention radiology, um, PEDS, uh, radiology and also neurointervention. So this again shows that we offer that uh, higher subspecialist training. And um, outside of Leeds, again, there are six large district general hospitals. Again, you'll rotate out to these hospitals in the first um, three years and you get great experience out there. You see a different case mix, again, interact with different consultants who have their own subspecialist interests. And um, it's a good chance to site out potentially where you want to work. and um, one of the benefits of Leeds and West Yorkshire is the great work-life balance. You can see from some of the pictures that um, there's lots of country around the big cities that um, you know, if you're into your uh, walking or outdoor activities, sports, it really offers a fantastic work-life balance. And compared to um, some places in the UK with, with your salary and the amount of money you're making, you can really afford to actually live in quite nice places. And this is you know, a house in North Leeds, which I just found off the right move, but for the same amount of money, you could be living in a flat in London, you know, this, this could be your home in Leeds. Um, so that's, if that's of interest to you, you know, that, that is again another fact to consider. And finally, something that I'm quite passionate about is uh, research. In Leeds, we have the NIHR, which is based here. We have a clinical trials unit. We have very academic interested clinicians in all the specialties, and that drives a lot of uh, research and innovation. And so this is kind of a great hub to be in if you are interested in, in that side of things. You work very closely with university leads on a lot of collaborative projects. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. Hopefully Shine's presentation is working out. Any questions? I'll stop sharing. So there was one uh, question here about um, IR training in Leeds and how competitive it is and um, yeah any information about IR training in Leeds Jim? Yeah so for general IR we have uh, three higher IR training numbers so um, what happens when you go into IR you have to apply to join onto the IR curriculum so you 
technically have to be on an IR number initially to do IR training, although actually there are loopholes. You can end up doing um, your higher training and sick year and other training students. But in terms of competition locally, these are all usually lead space training only because um, lots of other training schemes may offer these posts for external candidates, but we tend to retain trainees for these. We also have a separate neuro interventional training number as well. If we had a great interest from external schemes, then there is the possibility of obviously moving to Leeds for your higher training. And um, in the past, we, we just haven't had an issue with you know, catering for increased interest. But uh, at the moment, it just happens that we have mainly local trainees going into those posts. Um, one of the benefits of being a big training scheme is you can accommodate for quite a large number of, of trainees. And also, I forgot to mention, because we are an oncology center, we do offer a lot of the oncological interventions, which smaller training schemes you may not get as much exposure to. So that includes the vascular uh, on oncology intervention, also things like a tumor image guided ablation. So that's another good thing about being in a, in a, in a big busy center. Perfect, thanks very much. Um, we can try and go back to Xi'an and see if the... Uh, I think it's going to work. I've got some um, security set up here, you see. So, okay, is that, that's going to work now, right? That's, yeah, we can see that. Okay, good. Um, okay, so my name's Xi'an. Uh, I'm an ST5 in IR at um, the, in Wessex, so the Southampton scheme. Um, now, um, I, Wessex is split into Portsmouth and Southampton schemes. I haven't trained in Portsmouth, so I'm just going to talk about my experience in Southampton. Um, and also, congratulations to everyone for getting, you know, applying to radiology. No matter where you train, it's going to be excellent. You've chosen the best specialty in medicine. So, um, right. So the, what I think we should touch upon is what do you want from a scheme? And then, you know, use that to try and choose what's appropriate for you. Um, the, I'll go through the structure of training in Southampton. And then a little bit more about why I choose Southampton specifically, or Wessex and Southampton specifically. Um, so when I was choosing, I was thinking teaching. The uh, two, the um, FRCR exams are notoriously quite difficult. Um, so the teaching in Southampton, which I'll go on about a bit more later on, you've got lots and lots of dedicated teaching. So the FRCR part, part one, there's weekly teaching. A, we have a whole series of 2A days which is protected teaching, 2B is weekly teaching as well in the build up to the exam which is protected and then we have semi-protected um, daily teaching twice uh, on the, uh, every lunchtime and then on Tuesday and Thursday mornings as well. Um, so then how what's it going to be like on call for me? Well um, the on call in Southampton is incredibly well supported, it's brilliant. Um, so you have a junior senior on call system. So on evenings, there will so you're a junior when you're an ST two and three, and you're a senior when you're an ST four and five. Um, and it, every you have evenings on call where you have one junior, one senior, and then you'll have weekends where you have one senior and then two juniors. And the two juniors will alternate. One does a long day, one does a short day. And the person who's doing the short day gens, tends to really address any educational needs they have. Maybe they want to report more plane films. Maybe they want to look at more heads or abdos or do the lumbar spine MRs. You know, they get to choose a little bit more what they want to do on their half day, which is great. And then when you move on to seniors, your senior rotation four and five, um, you start doing nights as well. Um, you are on your own at nights, but I think Southampton is a little bit of an outlier in terms of hospitals um, in re with regard to subspecialty radiology. So each subspecialty has 24 seven on call provision. So there's not a duty radiologist for the night or the next day, like there are in most hospitals. Abdominal radiology has an on call consultant all the time. Cardiothoracic radiology has an on call consultant all the time. Neuro, MSK, et cetera. So when you're on nights and you get a difficult post-op pediatric brain MR that you don't know what to do with, you can just call the neuro radiology consultant. Um, if you've got an AOR you're not sure there's a dissection flap or not, you can call the cardiothoracic radiology consultant and they're happy to answer the phone to you. They're all a great bunch. So it's really well supported if, if, if only a little bit stressful. Um, so um, and then research. So it's quite an exciting time for research in Southampton. Um, a lot of investment gone in um, and this is our new uh, cancer and immunology research centre. Um, so that's on site as well. And we've got strong links with Southampton University. Um, it's an NIHR centre of excellence for MSK medicine, rheumatology, 
respiratory and um, hepatobiliary surgery. I think there's a few more, but those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um, so there's lots of opportunity for, to research and collaborate um, um, through the university as well. Um, so structure of training. Uh, so there are six to eight trainees taken in per year. That's alternating. Um, and when you start ST1, you go, you go around all the different subspecialties with your buddy. So you get buddy and you go on three month blocks. You start off on ultrasound. Well, you start off any one of these, but you do ultrasound with breast week, three months, abdominal with fluoroscopy for three months, cardiothoracics with nuclear medicine for three months, neuroradiology with musculoskeletal radiology for three months. Um, and um, that's basically for you to get a feel of the hospital, how the service works, um, you know, revised for your exam. Um, so that's good for ST1s. Uh, ST2 and 3, this is where you nitty gritty of training, you know, you're going to learn all your core blocks here. So you've got abdominal, cardiothoracics, musculoskeletal, IR dedicated, um, three month block in IR there. Um, oncology and breast, neuroradiology, which gives you head and neck. And if you're interested in neuroradiology, they can tailor it so that you have more sessions in the lab with the uh, interventional neuroradiologists. Um, Pediatrics, all on site. Um, and you have a general DGH block. Um, so these are the DGHs here that you can choose to go to. You do have a bit of control over which ones you want to go to if they're going to address a particular interest that you have. So if you're interested in gynae, abdominal, prostate, you know, Euro kind of stuff, you can go for Portsmouth, Basingstoke, uh, sorry, Bournemouth and Basingstoke. If you've got a bit more of a Euro radiology style, well, Portsmouth are, are, are a renal transplant centre, so you can go there. Salisbury does a, a bit more of a colorectal sway and Paul has really good nuclear medicine facilities. And Winchester, you go to if you, you know, kind of just want to chill out. Um, so, um, and then from SD4, uh, you go on to do your subspecialty training plus your general. So in the core curriculum, you do 60, 40 split and you get to choose any one of these that you want to do. Basically everything's in house. You really need to go elsewhere for like, additional experience, but you can. Um, and you can also choose IR at that point as well, which is ST6, uh, up to ST6. So why choose us? Um, well, we've got very happy trainees. Uh, these are two happy trainees here. This is Cameron uh, winning the fantasy football um, uh, trophy uh, league in 2020. Usually the ST1 wins it. Uh, I don't know why. I think they've got a lot more time on their hands. Um, but we've got great um, GMC sur survey results for the Wessex School of Radiology. So we finished first in 2015-16, third in 2017, first in 2018, and second in 2019. And 2020 was a bit different because COVID happened. What happened with that? Um, so uh, teaching, that's the other main reason to come. So you've got teaching, 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 lots of teaching. This is our basic timetable of the teaching you'd have on a Monday lunchtime, you get ultrasound teaching. This is all consultant led. Um, Tuesday morning, pediatric teaching with Dr. Fairhurst. She's an incredibly experienced pediatric radiologist. Um, that's really valuable. Great to be preparation. Lunchtime is abdominal. Wednesday is plain films and head and neck at lunchtime. Thursday is 8.30 in the morning, neuro teaching. Lunchtime, MS, MSK teaching. Friday is cardiothoracics teaching. Um, and it, this rarely uh, time when that's not on. So maybe like, you know, if some, one of the consultants on annual leave, you might miss a couple, but it's usually always on. This is protected teaching. So, so for FRCR1, every Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you are, the ST1s are not around. They're having dedicated didactic teaching for physics and anatomy. Um, and, you know, after one o'clock, no one really knows where you are. So, you know, tend to get a cheeky half day there. Um, so FRCR 2A teaching. So throughout the year, we have dedicated 2A days based on subspecialties. So that's pretty good as well. 2B is excellent teaching. So three months in the run up to your 2B exam, you'll be excused from um, every Tuesday from two o'clock to five o'clock and you'll have um, you'll be, you know, in a hot seat being grilled by a consultant and all of the slots pretty much get filled up. There's hardly any free slots. Um, everyone's very keen to teach. Um, so the additional facilities that we have, um, we've got a dedicated radiology library on site. So it's got about five computers in it for you to do all your audit work and whatever you want. Um, it's also got an ultrasound simulator and an IR simulator in there with various modules, which are pretty cool. We're buying some more IR modules as we speak. Um, then there's a library uh, a training fund um, for subscriptions outside of your study budget budget. So if you want to get, you know, like a particular course or something, we we've recently just been all, all been able to get the um 
the full full all access pass to Cersei um, funded outside of our own study budget. Um, and that comes from various things. So we have a £30,000 library fund, which we get fined if we don't spend enough of every year. So that's good. Two, £2,000 a year for our book fund. And we're very lenient with our study budget. So you get to go on lots of courses and uh, they let you go. Tertiary services. Now, uh, this isn't an exhaustive list, but it's the biggest hospital in the area. Um, and it's the trauma center. And it's the center for cardiothoracic surgery, cardiology, neurosurgery, including pediatric neurosurgery. Um, so you have INR with that as well. Hepatobiliary surgery, pediatric surgery, vascular surgery, respiratory medicine, neurology, oncology, hematology. What I'm trying to get at with this is it's really good training um, because um, all of these um, subspecialties have demanded, or place a lot of demands on their respective radiologists. And um, you learn a lot through that. You get involved in all of the MDTs, but also these guys have really gnarly on call scans that you have to look at. Um, so that's quite cool as well. Um, Next thing, um, so pros and cons, yeah, why, why come to Southampton? So there's lots to do in, in the region. Um, we've got the New Forest and South Downs on our doorstep, so there's lots of outdoors activities. Jurassic Coast is not too far away. There's, lots of, there's beaches in Bournemouth and Paul. Um, it's fantastic country pubs. I've become a bit of a country bumpkin since I've got down here. Love a country pub now. Um, and it's a fairly affluent kind of area, uh, by and large. Um, so you get all your fancy coffees and coffee shops and like, you know, extravagant, stupid cakes. Um, there's also, for those of you who are that way inclined, if you want to go meet your friends in London every now and again. So most people live in Southampton or Ward or um, Winchester, and you've got very good um, links to London Waterloo. So from Winchester, there's three services an hour and it takes about 50 minutes to an hour to get there, which is pretty good. So you can meet them for the day. Um, they're, we're a very social bunch, so we do a lot of stuff together. It's bit, it's quite like a family here, to be honest with you. Um, we do outside, you know, when it wasn't locked down, we go cycling as, as groups. People pair up and go running, walking in the in the sort of uh, national parks we have nearby. Every year, um, we haven't gone for the last couple of years. We go to the T Twenty Bash after work. Everyone descends on the and the um, Rose Bowl, we go watch, uh, have a few beers and uh, watch the cricket. We've got Rounders, BB, uh, Rounders and Barbecue. Um, yeah, we do year group dinners, so each year group, you know, there's a bit of competition who's like the most sociable and, um, you know, you do group dinners and stuff like that, which is good. And when you come as an ST1 Southampton, we do, S we do our ST1 welcome drinks. You'd be surprised how many consultants are happy to come to your welcome drinks and see you and um, see how you're getting on as well so it's really nice uh, nice vibe in Southampton um, what's not so good well I guess there's a lack of cultural and cuisine diversity you might miss that in some of your urban environments you know you can get really cool um, different from different group but not getting so much of that down here and um, and our st1 is completely unbanded you don't do any on call you barely do anything <laughs> um, um so you take a you probably take a bit of a pay cut when you start st1 that can be uh, a little bit difficult but actually with the volume of work you're expected to do in st1 you just get paid to revise basically so it's a bit of a you know take it with a pinch of salt um and then um just as quick one on ir training in particular um, so it's from ST4 to 6. There are two IR posts every year, and there's one neuro IR post every year. Um, and um, there's you will rotate between um, Southampton, Royal Bournemouth Hospital, and Queen Alexandra Hospital in Portsmouth. You do three, three six months blocks in UHS, and then uh, one or two in QA and Royal, Royal Bournemouth as well. Um, and it, there's so many services here that we're that, that you can get involved with. It's brilliant. Um, so we in UHS, for example, um, it's a pioneering center for pro pro prostate artery embolization, uterine artery embolization and for corneal cryoblation. I think you've done the second most in Europe. Um, you've got all the liver MWA. And so um, we also got chemo saturation, which is a really sort of novel quite procedure, down, uh, marinating the liver and mouth land street um uh, melanoma melanoma metastases to the, to the liver that's pretty cool and you've got your full complement of taste ta uh, urological procedures eus and one thing i like about southampton and bournemouth as well we've got really good uh, relationships with our vascular surgeons there's none of this kind of you know you might hear in the sort of debate around ir about you know 
the clashing between uh, vascular surgeons. We have a really good va working relationship with the vascular surgeons. I always have, there's always an IR reg, a vascular reg, and an IR consultant, a vascular consultant in most of the big, big cases. And we all share out the work quite evenly and it's nice. Um, so in, in um, Southampton is a, a moderate um, vascular centre that does um, EVAR, FIVAR and TVAR. Um, Royal Bournemouth is a brilliant, I'm there at the moment, it's fantastic. For It's technically a DGH, but they, their, their breadth of services they provide for IR is incredible. They're a high volume PAE centre, they do radial radial UAE, they also do their TACEs and TAEs radially as well. They do a full complement of um, ablation, cryo, RFA and MWA. That might not mean, not mean a lot to many of you just yet, but that's really good. Um, they also run some trials in superior rectal artery embolization treatment of hemorrhoids and they do introductory RFA. Um, Portsmouth is where you go to learn your bread and butter of your interventional skills. So um, they're a renal transplant centre. There's lots of fistula management and Working with fishers is a great way to get your, you know, your calf to wire skills together because it's fairly low risk, but also you're doing all the same stuff as you do in complex vascular cases. Um, they've got a fair amount of procedures as well. Um, they don't have vascular surgery on site, so they do mainly deal with mainly non-complex vascular stuff and low risk cases, which is really good for, you know, your ST4 year because that's what you want to be doing. Um, and that's about it, really. So any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks, Shian. Um, again, really, really useful and, and interesting to hear about Wessex. Um, I think we'll, we've got one last speaker, so we'll move on to the last speaker for the moment and then come back to the general questions at the end. Um, so we've got Devia next, who's going to be talking a little bit about Manchester and Liverpool scheme. Uh, Hi, everyone. So I've not, I've not got a formal presentation. Um, I thought I'd just keep it informal and happy to answer any questions as we go along about um, the training scheme in the Northwest um, as, as we go. Um, so I'm based at Withenshaw at the moment um, in Manchester sort of separated into two groups. So it's Manchester East and Manchester West. So in Manchester East, you've got um, the Royal Bolton Hospital, you've got Manchester Royal Infirmary and you've got the Manchester Children's Hospital in Macclesfield in there as well. Um, Macclesfield and Bolton are more like DGH, whereas um, MRI sort of has a specialist HPV centre and the Manchester Children's Hospital. And then Manchester West has Withenshaw, where I'm at currently, which is sort of a, a cardiothoracic and e dedicated ECMO centre as well, of which there are only five in the country. Um, there's Salford, which is a dedicated neuro and trauma centre. And then there's the Christie, which is a dedicated cancer hospital. Um, so when I initially applied, it was separated into Manchester East and Manchester West. So you had to pick which one you wanted to go into. But the reality is, I don't think it actually matters um, whether you get put in Manchester East or Manchester West. For example, I've got a friend who's currently at Macclesfield, but is going to Salford um, for her next rotation. So I think although they are sort of treated as separate schemes they aren't actually separate and all the trainees kind of cross over which is good because you then get sort of like the specialist experience of all the hospitals um st1 is a bit different in that we've got an academy placement as well which we share with mersey so we got to meet all the liverpool trainees as well which was quite nice um for sort of like socializing socialising and things um so that's at Edge Hill University so I started off in the academy so we started there in August um, and we basically had four months of just dedicated teaching which was really really good especially starting radiology um it was just I, I felt that it was quite overwhelming because it was completely different to anything I'd ever done before and there's a lot of information to take in um so we started and you get sort of like um, sessions on plane films, so MSK plane films, um, chest and chest films, and they'd cover all this sort of like basic material of how to look at things like mediastinal masses. Um, but then also you get sort of like dedicated sessions on CT and MR as well, so spinal trauma, um, sort of like general abdominal things, so things like ischemic bowel. And that was really helpful because when I started clinical, um, I'd seen... Um, a lot of these cases already and um, so when I when I saw something I, I was like oh I've seen that before and it's sort of like you've got this memory bank and, and you've sort of like seen a few cases like that so you've got some base base sort of like knowledge 
um, to be able to interpret what you're seeing sort of like when you go into clinical and you get put on to things like acute CT. Um, at the moment, my day-to-day -day sort of like timetable is we have half a day of fluoro. So I do some barium swallows on a Monday morning and then I do some plain films in the afternoon. Um, we do probably about two or three maybe for acute, it, it varies from week to week, acute CT sessions. And then we also do two to three ultrasound lists a week as well, which is really good. Um, the whole of Wednesday is dedicated to anatomy and physics teaching. So you have anatomy usually in the morning um, and then physics in the afternoon. And that usually, things have been a bit different because our exam got canceled, um, which was meant to be in March. Um, but usually there's anatomy and physics teaching all the way up until March. And then from there on forwards, they just focus on preparing you for on call uh, because you start on calls from ST2. Um, so usually in Manchester, you're sort of on weekends and long days from ST2 for on call. So they mainly focus from March onwards after the exam to gearing you up towards on call. But because things have been a bit different this year for us. So we're still getting sort of like intermittent anatomy and physics teaching. And they've sort of like swapped some of our sessions from January and February to focus more on the on-call preparation as opposed to um, exam preparation. Um, does anyone have any questions about the Manchester scheme? Or I can answer a few questions possibly about Liverpool as well, because I've spoken and met some of the trainees whilst we were at the academy. Um, we, we do have a few questions coming through, actually. Um, oh, cool. Sorry, so, I've not seen uh, them. So how many trainees are there on the Manchester and the Liverpool schemes? Um, so there are probably about 35 of us in total um, in teaching. I don't know about the split between Manchester and Liverpool, but 35 between Manchester and Liverpool as a whole. And I think within there, there's three trainees who are from North Wales. Um, they do increase the numbers every year from what I could see when I applied. So I think they, there may be some slight increase on year on year. Okay. And um, so let me you, have the when chat. When you go to the Northwest Deanery then, do you choose, you preference which one you want? Um, is that correct? Yeah, so you, you have to rank where, which ones you want. So I think there were three places in Manchester West, I think three places in Manchester East. Um, and you, you rank which one you want first. So for example, I wanted Manchester West first. Um, and then you rank them all in order. Um, and then from there on, sort of like they decide what you got, what you get sort of allocated into. And um, so I, you have to rank everywhere in the country. Well, you can rank everywhere in the country, but I think I knew I wanted to be in the Northwest. So I only rank jobs in the Northwest. Okay. Um, so that's one more question about the Northwest and then we'll open it up yeah. to general questions if that's all right. So. Just um, what are the main differences between the Manchester and the Liverpool training scheme? So there isn't much difference, actually, because of what all of our teaching is combined and we also have the academy together. Um, the main difference, I'd say, is the way that on calls are structured. So Manchester's more independent, I'd say, for on calls as a, as a radiology registrar. Um, you do have the on call consultant with you, but the way that Merseyside set up is actually quite good in that they have a sort of like general hub so you're not at the hospi hospital itself I don't think. Um, I've not actually started on course yet and my colleagues haven't either but this is what I've heard from some of the more senior regs at Merseyside. Um, so I think there's a hub and there's a senior reg there and a junior reg and you're covering all the Liverpool hospitals together but as a junior reg I think you've actually got a bit more support there because you can refer always to the senior reg if you're not sure about something which is really good. And I think it's worked really well in Merseyside. So thinking of applying that to Manchester as well. Okay. Um, thanks so much for, for covering that. We've got loads of questions. Um, <laughs> as I, I'm sorry, guys. I don't think we'll be able to get through all of them, but we'll, we'll try our best if, if that's all of right. Course. So, um, we've got a few questions about Leeds. So, Jim, if you could um, help us with that. A, few, a bit on IR training in Leeds and what the DGHs are and... How are the on calls structured? Um, is it competitive? That kind of so maybe a few. I know I've thrown a lot of questions right here at the same time, but yeah, I saw some of those questions. I don't think you can answer them directly on the website, so I thought we'd ask them here. Um, so DGH is around Leeds. There's six: uh, Calderdale, Mid Yorkshire Hospitals, York, Airedale, which is close to the Yorkshire Dales, and Bradford. Uh, all commutable, so you can stay in Leeds for the entire 
time that you're training and commute to these hospitals. Maximum in traffic, probably an hour-ish, so not so bad. Um, in terms of on calls, most of the DGHs outsource overnight. So if you're on call there, you finish at nine, ten o'clock latest. So um, the MPCU nights are in Bradford and in the two Leeds hospitals, and you probably do about one set of nights, so either for days or weekends every two months. And then you probably do on average a weekend every six weeks. Um, so it's manageable. And you start your on calls now in your ST1, but you shadow on call for the first 18 months. You're always with this a more senior registrar. Again, like Shana was saying, you're there for education and for you know seeing lots of different cases. Uh, and it's great because you're basically paid there to pay to learn. And then once you are a senior reg, the on-call responsibility is usually manageable because by then you feel a bit more confident. Out of hours, obviously CT is a bulk of your workload. Um, you get a handful of MRIs and the odd ultrasound like a transplant or a pediatric case. So again, actually quite a good case mix. But actually on call for radiology is probably a, one of the great times to learn and see cases and you can manage your own workload that way. So on call isn't something to fear I think, in radiology. So one question um, about changing training schemes and so maybe Matt, if you could um perhaps give your opinion on that like how easy is it to change schemes once you're on a training scheme and can you do that nationally or locally or what's the process for that um so i've got experience of, of changing schemes in london um and moving from georgia to uch i did that via the matching process i touched upon which was fairly easy to well yeah, you, yeah, everyone has to apply through that um i had an interview um, which was fairly standard interview type things, fairly informal. Uh, in moving to King's for SD6, that was actually arranged outside of the matching process. That was just kind of something that my supervisors were able to sort out by speaking to the other people um, at King's. Um, I, I imagine, I don't, I don't know particularly about changing schemes across the country, but you'd probably have to apply for interdenary transfers and things like that, which is, is trickier. Um, but certainly from my experience of moving around London, it's fairly straightforward to organise. And one of the non-London trainees comment on, on yeah. what they think about that. I think um, from, I think I might be able to speak for most of the non-London trainees. It, 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 outside of London, it's, you can only really leave your training program if they don't offer the training that you want to do locally. So um, if you need to do pediatric radiology and you want to be a pediatric radiologist, um, then you and that your, your scheme doesn't offer, offer it, then you'll be allowed to go. But if you're in a scheme that offers pretty much everything, that is quite, from our experience as well, some people wanting to go elsewhere, it's fairly difficult to argue moving when it's all available on site. Cool, thank you. Um, so we've got a few questions on start dates, actually, on how you find uh, which, when it starts, just for like visa applications and life planning and things like that. So. Um, my understanding is that some start in August, September, but where do we find that information? Um, so they're usually all um, listed on uh, when you when you rank your jobs, they will say when they will start. I think um, most of them generally start the first week of August, some start in October. Um, some in October, but they're all stated when you make your selection, when the start dates are. And I think there are some within certain deaneries which have different start dates. Um, I think some of the London ones I've seen in the past do that. Um, yeah, when, when, in, um, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Birmingham starts first week of September. I was just going to say that um, when when I applied, which was a while ago now, the they weren't always accurate, the dates on Oriel. So some schemes had different start dates. So like there was Imperial, you could start in August and also October, but that wasn't the case. Um, but I don't know what it's like now, to be totally honest with you. But I think the only thing, the only way you'd find out is by asking someone at that scheme or just going on what Oriel will tell you when you rank them. Yeah, just just add on, I think there's a question about international, um, you know, applying for visa and stuff. I'm pretty sure the visa... Uh, comes before the F2 year or the you know the, the year before radiology I think you get the um, visa before the start date for sure like you get it in like June or something uh, but do check I think the rules might have changed 
Um, there are a couple of questions about other training schemes that you, I don't know if anyone's aware of, but does, does, does anyone have any information or know anything about Edinburgh or Seven in particular? No. <laughs> uh, um, just again, I, I went to medical school in Edinburgh, so a lot of my friends who ended up doing training there stayed. Again, great training scheme, transplant centre, tertiary paediatric centre, great experience, but interventional radiology, they can offer lots of um, good relationship with the surgeons and vascular surgeons. So, um, and also Edinburgh's a beautiful place to live. Um, you know, very strong research hub as well. So if you're interested in research, you know, very good place to be. Lots of kind of charity and research council funding. It goes into that centre. So only positive things. So one question we've got, a general question for the panel. Um, did you do a taster week in the place you ended up in? And was this reflective of your time there as a radiology trainee? Um, I did a taster week in, in the Royal Free and that's partly why I applied to the Royal Free for my training. Um, and at least two or three of my more junior colleagues also did the same. They did taster weeks and then subsequently came here for training as well. I did a taster week in IR at the Christie, which is what made me want to do um, radiology because I loved it so much and spending time with the IR team. I haven't rotated there yet, but hopefully will do in the next couple of years. Um, so one question probably for Jim about academies. Is there any disadvantages of the academy format versus the traditional one? I guess the disclaimer is I'm slightly biased because I'm in an academy, but I don't feel there's that much disadvantage. Obviously, we're a big training scheme. We have about 70 trainees in total, including higher trainees, which can mean if you get a whole boatload of people wanting to do the same specialty, then it might be a bit competitive and some people might not get all the experience that they would like. But you can always obviously um, go to other training schemes and do a fellowship later on. So I don't think there are, you know, any disadvantages that I can think of. It used to be in your first year that you get into the pay cut, but now with the shadowing on call, that isn't applicable. Um, and if you are an SC1, SC2 and you, you want to locum, there are options in A&E, in, in medicine to locum as well and supplement as well. So nothing I can think of off the top of my head. Anyway. So I think there was a question about um, IR training. Um, I know we've got a few IR trainees on the panel today, um, but at the moment, is, is IR training quite competitive to get into um, at the SD4 process? Um, yeah, so I think it was, yeah, about that. Is there anyone who can comment on that? Uh, yeah, I don't mind. Um, I think it's going to be different across the country, so you probably want to hear from other people as well. But um, it's IR is getting more and more popular year on year, so it, you know, currently we have, you know, ST1 cohort, we went all six of them, wanted, well, six out of the eight, sorry, want to do IR. Um, there, and in Southampton, we have two places. And if two people want to do it, that's fine. If more than two people want to do it, then you have to um, interview, which we've had to do for the last two years. So I think it is getting more competitive. Um, but there are plenty of vacancies up and down the country. The person who didn't get a job this year got to feed into the London interview scheme for their overspill and found a place. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. You'll get a place somewhere. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo that as well. I think it's it's getting pretty popular. Um, and the with the London matching thing, you can slot into another scheme if, if your base scheme already has too many applicants in your cohort and they've got, you know, obviously there are, um, each scheme has to decide how many people they can train. So if, if, if you go over that, then it will look to support you moving elsewhere. Um, but yeah. And do all schemes pretty much have uh, like that some IR places now? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think in all the London ones, there is, there is, um, scope to do IR training. It, um, you know, there'll be different strengths and weaknesses of each scheme. So that's part of the reason I moved around a bit was to, to kind of take advantage of that and fill in areas which I hadn't seen or go to a different place uh, to, to seek out, you know, a particular area of intervention. So 
so I think um, there's, there's still so many more questions, but uh, I think just in the interest of time, we might have to wrap up there. Uh, I hope that we've been able to answer most of your questions and at least get some insight into the, the various trading schemes. Um, we've just got a couple of closing slides. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Um, oh, what? Um, so this was the final session of our applications masterclass series. So thank you to all of our speakers uh, for this session and the previous session. Um, and the recording should be available on YouTube for you to watch back in case you missed anything or want to, to watch it back later. Um, please do fill in our feedback form. We, we do, this is the first time we've run this kind of uh, thing online. And so it'd be really useful to know um, how you found it and any, anything else that you wanted covered uh, so we can run a similar kind of thing next year for, for next year's cohort. Uh, so that's a QR code and it's, uh, uh, we've gone this URL for the feedback. Um, just thought I'd mention a few uh, other things that are going on in the field of IR. So um, one thing we've recently launched is a multi-center audit called the McAfee audit, looking at outcomes of cholecystostomies. And we've currently got about 50 centers signed up. So if you do want to get involved in uh, the first national audit for IR, um, then do get involved. The details are on our website. And if you email the BSIR email that's on there, then um, do get in touch uh, as soon as possible and we can get you involved in that audit. We also run a monthly journal club for IR. And so the next one will be taking place in a couple of weeks time. Um, and there are also a couple of medical student junior doctor conferences in IR. Um, so the RISE is run by the Edinburgh Society, and that's taking place virtually on the 10th of April. And then we've got the IRIS conference, which is a uh, collaborative event from the London Med um, Radiology Societies, and that's taking place uh, a week later. Um, and do, of course, visit the IR Juniors website for uh, careers information. And if you do want to get involved, just uh, email us, uh, and then I'm sure we can get you involved because we've got loads going on. Um, other than that, thank you guys for attending. That's everything from us. Um, and yeah, have a good evening. Thanks very much to all of our speakers again. And please do fill out our feedback. Thanks, guys. Cheers.